All right, on this episode of the course series, I'd like to run through how to use make files and the make utility in order to automate the build process of our project. The key features of make files include one, an automation of the build process. Two, it helps us manage our dependencies more easily. It also helps us compile and build multiple sources and four, keeps track of compilations. That way we spend less time compiling the entire project and only compiling the objects that have changed inside the project. So make files can be a little daunting at first. We're gonna to go to extensions and luckily for us, we have an extension that we can install, which will help make our lives easier. If we type in C++ make, there is this second option here that it says here, creates a C, C++ project with pre-configured make file. I'm gonna install this extension and all it's going to do is help us generate that make file so we don't have to write it out ourselves. Again, using this great thing about VS Code, which is what they call extensions, it just helps us run the project quicker. Then we'll go back to our Explorer into our main CPP file. And in order to generate that make file, we can use the command palette. If we go down to the cog, click on it for settings, and then we can actually select command palette, or you can do control shift P. You'll get this field where you can start typing into. Let's type in make. You'll notice C, C++ make init project. That's to initialize our make file for our project. We'll click on this and you have four choices afterwards. C project, C++ project, only C make file, only C++ make file. We want the C++ project option. Once we've done that, we'll get our make file template written out for us. The C++ project also includes C, so do not worry about that. And in this template, you can see that there's quite a bit to this file. If we scroll through, we didn't want to have to write all of that, but basically now we have an intelligent template that can easily compile all of our files together. So what we want to change is just the make file settings. What do we want to call the app? Well, we already know, simple list. And what type of extensions we want to compile? Well, we want to compile the CPP extension. Then what we have is the source directory. So where do we want to compile this thing? From, well, that's the folder location. So the directory where the project exists, and we can figure this out together. Okay, and then up top, I'm going to view, and I just want to see a terminal. That way we can navigate through things. Since we have a project open, it should automatically load the terminal into the directory where the project's located. So this makes it super easy on us. If I just type in PWD, this means print working directory. If I press enter, I'm gonna get a result. Notice the result down here is the location of where my simple list directory is based on the absolute path of the system. So home, savvy Nick, simple list is where it's located. Now I can easily take that and instead of this SRC, I can actually paste in that directory location. Of course, yours might be somewhere else. doesn't really matter. You can still paste it in as the source directory. And that should really be enough in order to compile our project now with a make file. I'll make one other note. The object directory is going to be, if you have a separate directory, that pertains to extra objects. When you initialize a makefile using this extension, it's going to create a source and object directory for you in the current located project. Notice over here on the left side, we now have an object and source include directory. So now I can actually move any files that I want into the source directory and they will get compiled. I don't necessarily have to actually change this. You only need to change these if you have a different location as to the project that you're currently building for but since we've done this all together with our project, things should be just fine. I'm gonna make sure to save the make file and save the main CPP file, and then I'm going to exit out. Now we have the files here, which include main CPP and the make file. And below here, we can issue a command as long as you are in the directory of the project called simply make. Notice it says no input files. Well, that's because the make file actually wants to compile things from the source directory. So we need to move main into source. It's gonna ask us if we're sure we wanna do that. Yes, we do. Yes, it's a different location, but it will help us in the future here. So anyways, we're gonna run make again and notice that time it worked. Congratulations, you've successfully compiled your program using make in a make file. What is happening here is make is compiling any source file that it finds in the source directory. So it found a main CPP file. So it compiled that file for us and linked it for us. So make went through all of our files found the one file we had, compiled it, created an object, and then linked the object to create a program called simple list. In order to get a list of all these things here in our directory, we can do ls. Notice we have simple list. 
And why is it called simple list? That's because we told that make file configuration that we changed a moment ago that our project is called simple list. So if you want to see that right here is where that gets set. And in order to run this compiled program, we can down here in the terminal by doing dot slash simple list, pressing enter. And notice it says hello world as well. One thing I want to remove is this program here, which is a compiled version of what we first made. I'm gonna delete this because we don't necessarily need that anymore. Now that we have our make file generating a build for our program, it will no longer create that main file. Instead, it's going to create this simple list. Just be sure not to touch your main.cpp file. We'll need that later. So we're gonna go back to main CPP and describe what exactly is going on here. So I wanna go into depth a little bit with this before we continue on. First off, this line here, include IO stream, is something called a preprocessor directive, which is a way to tell the thing compiling that you want to include some library header. Specifically, this one is called IO stream, which helps us write stuff to the terminal or console. This int main, and specifically main, is the entry point of our program. This is where the first bit of execution takes place and is known as the main function. Every C++ program is going to require this. And then these curly braces just specify that anything between them belongs to a specific function. For this function, it's called main. Everything in between those curly braces are called statements. So our first statement here, the standard out hello world, it's taking a new line generated by the standard library. We can think of these as something called objects, object over here as well. And it's using this, which is an insertion operator. So we have two of them and it's inserting the new line object with hello world and then inserting hello world and the new line object to an object called C out. And the specific job of the C out object is to display anything given to it to our console or terminal as we saw before. Finally, our second statement, I'm gonna call it S2, this S1, is a statement that returns a number telling the operating system that the code executed successfully and zero represents successful. The last thing that we haven't talked about quite yet is this int right here, which is what type of data type or parameter that this function is expecting to return. So int basically just means a non-decimal number. And since we plan on returning a zero, we specify int so that this function can actually return something. So all of this code in order to display something to the console. And you could be asking yourself, why would you wanna use C in C++? Well, it's a powerful programming language for many reasons. Basically, some of the main reasons are it's efficient and performant because it allows for low level memory access, meaning you have pretty much full control over your memory management and allows you to create performance critical applications. Number two, portability. You can basically use C and C++ on any system and it's adopted with all sorts of hardware and is actually the standard for most hardware applications. It's stable and has a huge community that supports it because it's been around for around 40 years, which has given it many years to prove itself out in systems and production systems. Another reason is it has proper standardization. It's been well-defined by the ISO and IEC standards. So we know what behavior to expect, including from the language libraries that exist for it and even compiler behavior. These are some of the main reasons that C and C++ is still used today especially when it comes to hardware circumstances. Many of the newer languages do not even offer proper memory management, something that is critical for building firmware and low level embedded systems. It also offers you general capabilities to write any kind of a general program as well. You're not stuck to hardware. So it's really an all encompassing great software language to learn. And we'll continue learning about it in the next episode of the series. Great work.